a young Dicolus walks into a GameStop in the year 2000. With the PlayStation 2 as the console to get, every gaming magazine has the young bear's head abuzz with new possibilities. With a desperate need to get something new, he heads over to the bargain bin near the front of the store and grabs the first colorful jewel case at the top which reads, Naito Ando Bebe, or Guardian's Crusade in the West, is a rare JRPG. Presenting the equally rare idea of non-random encounters and leveraging a design referred to as living toys. The bright and relatively low detail of the toys play into the art style, kid-friendly presentation, and works well in hindsight with the early graphics of the PlayStation. Now, I'm no visual snob. Gameplay always comes first, to the point that one of my favorite games is Blood Rain. But Guardian's Crusade wasn't going to be remembered for the polygon count. I think I know what we remember Blood Rain for, though. <laughs> That's right, shout out to my Nocturne fans. So the question is, why do I remember this? And specifically, why is there nothing in my head but flashes of anger and disgust for a children's game that has a niche following at best? No one publicly berates or praises it. On YouTube, it's mostly speedruns or at Let's Plays with one video playing up the best video game ever heard of. But soon after, modern YouTube will try to get you to look at anything else. I usually don't like talking about things I felt negatively about, since I'd rather focus my breath on things I actually love, or can't look away from, like Knuckles. But I'm making an exception here. Consider this my attempt to find out why did I hate Guardian's Crusade? You, you see what I did there? <laughs> That's how you know it's gonna be fun. Tamsoft, known best for their Simple series, or the Oni Chambara games, or the Senran Kagura games, or insert third game prominent for tits, wanted to make a game that would appeal to children and adults alike, specifically as an introduction to RPGs for children. This is all according to a source I've lost but surely will be grilled about in the comments. Trying to find history or details on the development is pretty sparse. There's a mention that Broderbund, the game's publisher in the West, being pricks over the game's original name, and a localization concern with a living toy pulling out a realistic gun and using Russian roulette as a battle mechanic. You know what, I, I get that one. A game with toy aesthetics for children might not want Russ Bucket here pulling out his 357. Complete speculation, but I'm assuming there's little documented due to the usually private nature of game development in Japan pre-2000. So, while researching the game, I learned that official PlayStation Magazine issue 19 had a review. So maybe I could learn about what people thought at the time there? Hey, uh, Future Dick here. Uh, this was done prior to me learning that there are actually tons of reviews still on the internet from multiple sites in 99. I was mostly looking for something in print since it would be near impossible to change or edit after publishing. There was some marketing around this. Tamsoft paid for a full two-page spread in the same issue, or I guess technically Broderbund in this case, or maybe Activision, I, I don't know. And OPM even did a poll asking what people were excited for. <laughs> oh, there it is! One percent! And yikes. Having to go up against Final Fantasy VIII, my favorite of the era, definitely just curb stomped this poor game. All right, page 52, here we go. A decent diversion, but never lives up to its own potential. Oof. Three paragraphs to summarize a few points. The game was published in the West thanks to Activision. The reviewer likes the animations, although the models blur the line between simplistic and ugly. He likes the dialogue, dislikes the limitations of Baby, uh, that's the bubblegum monster that you travel with on the cover, and likes the living toys. It feels pretty verbatim for most critical reviews of this game, and three paragraphs from 99 is more than I'd expect from most print publications. Yes, I've since seen and read the other existing reviews online from 99. Oh, but I've never seen this before. The RPG quick reference chart. 
It's a grid comparison on seven games that were coming out either around the same time or to be announced. <laughs> Gumby meets Wild Arms is the most Western take on this I've ever heard, and I love it. Points off for using the word little twice in the not so good section, though. OPM fairly dogged the game multiple times in one issue, but they also gave Tai Fu a fucking one and a half out of five, so their opinion is IGN tier to me. So I actually did things a bit different this time. I actually was streaming this a bit on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash please have me on in the background. Granted, I sped through the beginning because I remembered it so well. You are knight. No double entendre, no deeper meaning. Just get up and put on your shoes. You are sent by the mayor of your town to deliver a letter to another mayor of the next town over. You play delivery boy and the other mayor mentions that, no, the fact that we have bad crops this year does not mean that the world is ending. Please stop huffing dry erase. You head back home and see this pink moomin on the ground. My base instinct to walk around it is denied as the game makes me talk to it. God then comes out and tells us that this thing is incredibly important to the well-being of the world. Yes, God, God himself. So naturally, the mayor tells us to dump this abomination in the cave of monsters in the morning. We oblige and cast him into the death. Of course, the knight grows a conscience and decides to go save the baby. I'd personally say no, but this is for kids, so shut up, go get the water chewing gum. You cut through the town in the cave and find a bird's nest with the Pepto-Bismol baby in. You, or I in this case, get rocked by the mama bird. Like, I'll admit, I must have missed something because the difficulty spike shot up like a fucking rocket. I had nothing that would get me through this fight, and I really didn't skip fights out in the overworld much. So much for Child's first RPG. Also, my cheats didn't work, so I ended up cutting the stream there. Any footage you see hereafter will be from a speed run done by Obsidian, the current world record holder at this time of recording. I did not contact them, I'm sorry. Uh, please go subscribe to their YouTube too. From the splits they have, it looks like the main pillars after where I quit were, holy shit, this map skip looks insane. Uh, they make their way to a chapel across the map. Uh, you watch an RPG party get cooked by Dry Bones Bushizima from Bloody Roar. I might be complaining things, I'm really not following what's happening here since the speed run. You fight his discount transformation kink ass and abandon the RPG party, then go fight a giant pastrami monster. Oh my god, his attacks and the sound effects for them are fucking rude. Fight an Eldridge Gumby OC. Same deal, homies rude. You find that Bushizima killed the baby dragon's mom. Oh, by the way, it's uh, this little shit is a dragon. Also, I noticed that the mom is white, baby is pink, knight is blue. Let's go, trans rights at 99. Who the fuck is this? That's just Dee Dee's imaginary friend from Dexter's lab. I actually like his design a lot since he also looks crossed with like a Rocco's modern life character. All right, fight Bushizima, who's apparently doing this to save his sister. Oh no, the mom used the last of her power to save the baby. We end up in Cube World or something? The runner skipped the FMB cutscene, so I don't know. Baby joins the party again. Hooray. Exposition dump, which is something I wouldn't expect one to be required in a speed run, and two to be heavy in a game for young children, but I guess there's blood, so I guess that came with the expectation that you know how to read. The runner gets, oh no, there's two now! There's two of them! You fall in the river in Lego City and an old man fishes you out. Wait, the baby fl- oh, All right, it's forgiven, but they are on thin ice. We're at a temple now to get a toy called Foreman. The baby now fights as a regular party member and it looks like Foreman pretty much lets you pull an escape rope to the start of a dungeon for free. Another temple to get Tough Ball, Ice Temple, Draken. Next temple, we fight some robots. Oh, okay. 
Uh, the runner has it as Holy One, and there's a total of four of them. All right, well, kill Holy Temple Two. Already did the two of them joke. Uh, Holy Temple Three has got a lot of fucking deep. Wait, is this an SMT game? Holy Temple Four, minimal bullshit. I can appreciate that. Dog, who the fuck is Darwin? Wait, he attacked himself? Wait, Knight is dead. Wait, we're in the cube world again? We get new armor at least, and now we can fight Darwin, whoever he is. We drop a nuke on his ass and win super easy. The baby gets super flight speed and <laughs> I can't, I can't make two transformation jokes. People will start just making accusations. Koozie comes to help, so we don't have to have a sky fight. I forgot to mention that since Knight doesn't talk, uh, we have a fairy friend who provides his like internal monologue. She essentially thinks about how she loves Knight, but it's a Peter Pan situation. And hey, bro, I get it. Tinkerbell is a baddie, but like it would never work out long term. Also, we fight an angel from Evangelion. The baby transforms. Oh, he's fucking goofy. I love him. Oh, you know what? I'll kill a Dark Lord with him. I love him. And then you seal the angel. Oh, oh, it's one of those Kirby boss fight sequences of here's something to mentally scar children for the rest of their lives. Knight fucking dies. I have no idea if this is intentional for the run or not. This time the angel dies and who the fuck is this? Come get your man. And we get credits. That wasn't bad. The toy theme really works for the opening, but it gets pretty Shimagami Tensei towards the middle there. Ultimately a fine RPG. It's still made by Tamsoft, so there's more bugs than in Beetlejuice's hair, but I can forgive it for what the game is going for and especially when you consider the intended audience. You know, unlike most reviewers my age do about kids media. Don't get me wrong, I think kids media needs to be held at a higher regard than quote unquote adult shit, but I can still tell that Child Nicholas was well justified in hating this. I hated JRPGs as a kid and only built a tolerance for any of them that weren't generation one Pokemon in my 20s. And even then, I still dislike most turn-based combat with a passion. As for why this particular gem stuck out in my skull, like Punish Snake, I'm gonna assume it's because I really wanted to like the aesthetic, but probably got bored of the grinding, the slow transitions in and out of combat, and not realizing there's a fucking run button? Oh my god, dude. All things I can only blame on me being a dumbass child now the dumbass bear before you. So overall, uh, 7 out of 10. If you would like to see me play through it myself to completion, or some other game that I'm hyper fixated on, please consider following me on Twitch or Twitter, or else I'm throwing that fucking baby back in the goddamn bin. <laughs>